Now, let me ask you this and enter into another discussion. When is rebellion justified? I would say that rebellion is justified when you have no other option, legal or otherwise. I can see why you'd say that, but are we really going to say that life under Great Britain was so terrible that revolution was simply choosing the option of self-defense against the inevitable alternative of slavery and death? It's an exaggeration to say that there was no other option. What other option could they have pursued? Just living under the not bad conditions that they were living under. That would be an option. Continue to pursue their interests and push for some form of uh, representation. And just suck it up. I mean, I'm going to talk about it a little later, but lots of countries did do that and they turned out really well. Yeah, like Hong Kong. (laughs) Hong Kong didn't turn out bad because of the British. I know, I know. They've turned out bad because of the Chinese. That was a a low blow and it was totally off base, but I don't know. That's the first thing that came to my mind. What about India? Well, India is an example of a more violent Mm -hmm. uh, interaction for, you know, secessionism. But it occurred much later. I don't think the British pushed back quite as much on India. I think they kind of let them go a little easier because it was in the post-colonial era right yeah yeah t- very different eras there so i guess that's that's kind of tomato tomato but it is worth mentioning i don't know who brought this up but i've just heard this thrown around that just imagine if india had been under the control of uh, the russians do you think we would have known who gandhi was like it's only because the british were actually pretty decent to these people that they allowed gandhi to exist and to actually protest so something to think about there yeah india was almost communist at one point they were socialist in the 60s 70s 80s i think and it's hard to compare india with america they're so different they are uh the colonists and their representatives had requested time and again the chance to have a say in england's lawmaking they were rejected so i guess that was one of the the pathways that they just tried to take they tried to just request hey let us have a say not a big say just a say and england said nope Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Britain could have compromised some and continued to let them mostly govern themselves. That's my general opinion on every government anyway, but not just for colonies. Kind of should let local governments run as much as they can. So that's, that's my response. When it comes to international politics, might makes right. If you have the will and the means to secure power for yourself, do it. All is fair. So in that sense, what America did whether we think it's right or wrong, whether it was justified in their laws or England's laws. This is international politics, baby. There's an ocean between those two places, the colonies and Britain. And what they decided to do is legit. Well, that's some BS. Uh, That justifies every (laughs) evil thing that people have ever done to each other. You can use that argument to say, well, yeah, I punched you in the face, but I mean, in the end, I won, so I'm right. But that's, uh, like I said, it's only in international politics. Yeah, within, within, a, within a system of government, there's a set of laws, and you all both agree to them. And if you break the laws, okay, it's, that's your issue. But there are no international law. Well, there are now, but there shouldn't be. Hot take. Oof. The Geneva Conventions were a mistake. Oh. Changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but really, though, they only work if everybody agrees to them. And how many countries actually agree to them? Do you think that every single country is is following them no there are countries that are saudi arabia was like the head of the human rights commission at one point (laughs) exactly point proven there the hypocrisy is ridiculous and in international politics people are going to do what they're going to do so you might as well get yours while the getting's good when soldiers are quartered in your own home or your town and weapons and ammo are confiscated you better rebel i agree in general with the latter part of that statement But let me continue to play devil's advocate. It's only understandable that governments would take away gun rights from convicted felons, as we do today in America. If treason and rebellion are felonies, it only follows that they shouldn't, that those who participate in them should not have the right to bear arms. If it's widespread confiscation without trials, then yes, I agree with Dan, of course. But if you have put people to trial and implicated them in rebellion, then I, I think it's understandable and maybe justifiable to take away their guns as we take away guns for murderers and thieves if you do it on a case-by-case basis you're saying yeah yeah of course if you if you're tried by a jury and you're found guilty of a felony that's reason enough and that's it's reason enough for our current legal system we're the top gun rights country in the world hell yeah brother 
and I'd have to think about the quartering of the troops in a state of emergency. I'm not really sure. It seems like maybe in a state of emergency, it could be okay for a little bit. Perhaps. And it's really not something we have to deal with anymore. So well, it's because like, the Third Amendment protects us. The Third Amendment, the least known amendment out of all of them. Well, yeah, it, it does protect us. But also, just in general, there's really no conceivable need for there to be troops quartered in, in like the inside of America. Because we have police and we have... Um, the National Guard set up and they have their own buildings. Yes. So there's no need to quarter people. No, it's just an un- unnecessary risk. Mm-hmm. And and there's really never going to be, well, I say never, never say never, as they say, there's probably not ever going to be a situation where we have foreign invaders on our actual soil in large enough numbers to need troops to be quartered in wherever they are. So probably a moot point. And here's my, here's my best argument for... The revolution here. It's better to nip an issue in the bud than to let it carry on for too long. Evan may argue that the revolution was an overreaction, but I see it as a perfect example of being proactive. What was to stop England from raising their taxes? 3% could have easily turned to 5% or 10%. The founders and the colonists at large were way smarter than we are today. Modern Americans are like, oh, you want half my paycheck? Okay, thank you, sir. May I have another? You've got the virgin 21st century Americans and the Chad colonists. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me, can't get fooled again. If the revolution hadn't happened, England would have continued to abuse the colonies. We could learn a thing or two from them. Just saying that 3% tax on tea is lower than all of our sales taxes, even just state sales taxes. Don't remind me. Which applies to all sales, not just freaking tea. Just drink coffee or something, jeez. <laughs> I guess my overall objections can be boiled down to this. The colonists were overreacting big time. American history since the revolution has been rife with abuses that the revolutionaries fought against. And people should follow lawful authority. I know you're going to disagree with that point. Since the British were the ones who chartered the colonists to go to North America, and Britain had been considered their mother country and protector, we must conclude that Britain was the lawful and legitimate authority of the North American colonies. Perhaps. But man, I just love a good revolution, especially when it ends so well and and just goes so swimmingly, like ours did, thankfully. And considering we are the largest military in the world, the most prosperous economy, the first nation to land man on the moon, and the first country to split the atom, the only nation capable of defending the world against alien invasions also, or at least if the Hollywood movies are anything to go by. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the ends justify the means there. On a philosophical level, I say that the ends can never justify the means, but maybe that's another episode. Evil is evil and good is good. Committing evil in order to accomplish good opens up the Pandora's box, and this philosophy has been used by every tyrant to justify their actions. That being said, America's Revolution was probably the most successful in history, maybe ever. Thanks for listening to the Sons of Antiquity Highlight Reel. To hear this clip in context and to enjoy our full-length episodes, check out the links in the description or search Sons of Antiquity on YouTube, BitChute, Spotify, or Apple and Google Podcasts.